Our objectives for this lesson are the following. Graph transformations of exponential functions and determine the domain and range of exponential functions. I suggest you take time to watch these videos to fully comprehend today's lesson. Remember these two graphs from a previous video? The blue one is f of x equals 2 raised to x, while the red one is g of x equals 1 half raised to x. Focus your eyes on the red function. If I am going to bring up my 2, this will become 2 raised to negative 1. Copy x. Simplifying this, it will become 2 raised to negative x. Now, what did you notice with my functions? The exponents. Here, our x is positive. Here, the x is negative. But it doesn't do any changes with our graphs. So what do you think is the effect of having a negative exponent? g of x equals b raised to negative x reflects the graph of f of x equals b raised to x about the y-axis. So, there have been a reflection about the y-axis. That is the effect of having a negative exponent. In the previous slide, we learned the effect in our graph when we make our exponent negative. Now, what do you think is the effect if we make our base negative? So, negative b raised to x reflects the graph of f of x equals b raised to x about the x-axis. So, this time the reflection is about the x-axis. So, it will look this way. So, that is the effect when we make our base negative. It will reflect about the x-axis. Now, let us continue. We already have negative 2 raised to x. This is the orange graph. What if I want to make my exponent negative again? So, what will happen to my graph? From what we have learned, when we make our exponent negative, it will reflect about the y-axis. So, the graph will reflect about the y-axis. It will look like this. That is the effect of making your exponent negative. Now, let us combine all the graphs that we formed. So, this is our mother function. f of x is equal to 2 raised to x. When we made our exponent negative, it reflects about the y-axis. So, this is the graph, the red one. Now, going back to our mother function, when we make our base negative, the graph reflects about the x-axis. That is the orange one. And finally, when we make our exponent negative, this is the violet, the graph reflects about the y-axis once more. So, this is the graph. Let us do some more transformations. What if I add a little something to my exponent? Like this, g of x is equal to b raised to x minus c. My mother function is f of x equals 2 raised to x. You already know the graph of it. What if I make it g of x is equal to 2 raised to x minus 2? So what is the effect of minus 2 in my exponent? So g of x equals b raised to x minus c makes the graph of f of x equals b raised to x move c units to the right. Mind you, to the right if it is negative. So, this means that my graph will move 2 units to the right. Let's make use of a reference point. I'll make use of the y-intercept, 0, 1. If my graph will move 2 units to the right, then this should end here. Now, let us push our graph 2 units to the right. That's it. So, the asymptote is still the same. It now passes through the point 2. 1. Now, let us determine the domain and range. For our mother function, we already know that its domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range is from 0 to positive infinity. Now, for our g of x, the green one, the domain is also the same from negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range 2, it's from 0 to positive infinity, 0 not included. So meaning, adding negative 2 to your exponent does not affect the domain and range of your original function. Now let us have g of x is equal to b raised to x 
plus c this time so from my mother function i'll make it 2 raised to x plus 1 what is the effect of adding plus 1 in my exponent so this will make the graph move c units to the left if it is positive then it moves to the left so this means my graph will move one unit to the left let me use again our y-intercept, 0, 1. And if the graph moves one unit to the left, then it should pass through this point. Now let us pull our graph one unit to the left. That's it. Determine now the dominant range for the original function. Nothing changed. Negative infinity to positive infinity and 0 to positive infinity for the range. For the green graph, that is, is still negative infinity to positive infinity and from 0 to positive infinity for the range. So adding a positive number to your exponent does not affect the domain and range of the original function. What if the transformation is like this? g of x is equal to b raised to x plus d. So from my original function, I'll make it 2 raised to x plus 3. So what is the effect of adding plus 3 here? g of x equals b raised to x plus d makes the graph of f of x equals b raised to x move d units up. So whatever is the number here, that is the number of units that your graph will move upward. So it means that my graph will move 3 units up. So let me use again the y-intercept, 0, 1. Moving the graph 3 units up, then this should falls here. Now let us push our graph going up by 3 units. That's it. Now, let us determine the domain in range. So, for the original function, f of x equals 2 raised to x, the domain is the same, the range is the same. How about for g of x, the green one? So, the domain is still negative infinity to positive infinity, but the range, look at the range now. You started seeing a graph at 3. 3 is not included. That is the new horizontal asymptote. So, from 3 to positive infinity, 3 not included. So it means the range now depends on the value of your d. Now, what about if I have b raised to x minus d? What do you think is the effect? Let us say 2 raised to x minus 1 because this time I have negative. So it will make the graph move the units down. So this means that my graph will move one unit down. Using, again, the y-intercept, moving the graph one unit down, the new graph should pass through here. So let us now move our graph down. That's it. For the domain and range of the original function, of course, is still the same. Now, for the green graph, the domain is still negative infinity to positive infinity. But for the range, you started seeing a graph at negative 1 going up negative one not included because this is the new horizontal asymptote so from negative one to positive infinity so once again the range depends on your d let us study another transformation this time let us multiply a constant to a constant raised to a variable let us start with a constant greater than one so let us say i have 2 times 2 raised to x. So 2 raised to x is the matter function. I just multiplied 2 here in front. So what will be the effect of this? It says here, g of x equals a times b raised to x is stretches the graph of f of x equals b raised to x by a factor of a. So this means my graph will be stretched by a factor of 2. And how can we show that? By multiplying the y-coordinates of f of x equals b raised to x by a. So again, let me use the y-intercept 0, 1. It says here, multiplying y-coordinates. So the y-coordinate of the y-intercept is 1. Let us multiply it by our a, and our a here is 2. So, 1 times 2 is 2. So, meaning the new point now is 0, 2. 
So this is the point. So the new graph should pass through this point. Let us now graph. Okay, let me clear this one. The graph did not move up. Notice, the horizontal asymptote remains the same. That is the x-axis. The graph was stretched, meaning it goes a little bit faster going up. So that is the effect of multiplying a factor greater than 1 to your original function. So once again, you just have to multiply the y-coordinates by that a, and that A is your factor. So, here, our Y coordinate is 1 multiplied by 2. That's why we have 0, 2. Let's try to have another point. This point is what? This is 1, 2. So, let us multiply 2 by 2. So, we will be having 1, 4. 1, 4. Correct. Our graph passes through the point 1, 4. Now, for the domain, nothing changes for the original function. For the transform function, the domain is still the same, negative infinity to positive infinity. And for the range, also the same, from 0 to positive infinity. So, this means multiplying a factor greater than 1 to your original function does not affect the domain and range of the original function. Let me just continue. Allow me to put a negative here. So, what again is the effect of this negative? The graph will reflect about the x-axis. So, this point will reflect here. So, 0, 2 will now become 0, negative 2. So, let us now reflect our graph. So, it will be like this. For the domain, there's no problem. It's still negative infinity to positive infinity. But for the range, be careful. So, it started at negative infinity up to 0. But 0 not included because 0 is actually the horizontal asymptote. Now, let us have value of a that is less than 1 but greater than 0, such as g of x is equal to 1 half times 2 raised to x. So, what is the effect if your a is less than 1 but greater than 0? It shrinks the graph of f of x equals b raised to x by a factor of a. So, this means that my graph will be shrink by a factor of 1 half. And how are we going to show that again? Just like what we did in the previous slide. We just have to multiply the y-coordinates by a. So, my y-coordinate is 1 multiplied that by 1 half. That would be 1 half. So, the new point is 0, 1 half. So, now let us sketch our graph. So, let me clear on this. The graph did not go down. It was shrink. You will notice that the horizontal asymptote remains the same, which is the x-axis. But the graph goes a little bit slower going up than the usual. So that is the effect if you multiply a factor that is less than 1 but greater than 0. For the domain and range, for the original function, of course, is still the same. For transform function, we have the domain negative infinity to positive infinity. And for the range, is still the same, 0 to positive infinity. Let's do extra challenge, combinations of the transformations that we discussed earlier. So I'll bring out my mother function, f of x is equal to 2 raised to x. Now, because of negative 2 here, it means that my graph will move 2 units to the right. So, let us move my graph 2 units to the right. Then, because of positive 3 here, it means that my graph will move 3 units up. So, let us move this 1, 2, 3 units up. And because of negative here, this means that my graph will reflect down. So, let us reflect this graph down. Now, let us determine the domain and range. Of course, the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range, it started at negative infinity up to positive 3. But 3 is not included. So, negative infinity to positive 3. Here are the summary of what we discussed, transformations involving exponential functions, the reflection, the horizontal shift, the vertical shift, the vertical stretching or shrinking. 
While this one is the domain and range of exponential functions, the domain is always the set of all real numbers, from negative infinity to positive infinity. While the range depends on two things, your a and your d. If your a is greater than zero, then your range is from d to positive infinity. But if your a is less than zero, your range is from negative infinity up to d. Now let us check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Here are the answers. So let us enumerate first the transformations. Plus 3 here means the graph will move 3 units to the left. And the negative 4 here means the graph will move 4 units down. And the negative here means that it will reflect down. So here is the graph. Now, for the domain and range, of course, the domain is the set of all real numbers. And for the range, since our a is negative, so it is from negative infinity. And our d is negative 4, so negative infinity to negative 4. Negative 4 not included. Gets?